Ten Academy confirm. Yeah, okay, great. So, yeah. Um, so this week's challenge is on, again, uh, preparing you for web stream engineering or blockchain engineering jobs. And there will be a lot more. So last time it was on Algorand blockchain, and this time will be on Ethereum uh, blockchain. And this time you will be focused, basically you are focused uh, not on NFT, but basically contract, building contract for um, and interacting with real world events. Um, and basically using the events like devices for uh, confirmation uh, as, as a way of like releasing funds, right? So the challenge, it is called, as you already have seen, um, the challenge is Web3 refunded by refund by location smart contract. The basically it is about a smart contract controlling the a confirmation of a location. So an agreement is made between two bodies and where one, when they demonstrate that they are in a grid location, then a refund will happen. But that refund could be in any form, right? It could be a confirmation, a tick, it could be a grade, it could be anything, right? So, but it's just somehow that there has to be a location um, agreement. And then when that location agreement happens, then, um, Sorry, I... Okay. Great, sorry. Um, there was another meeting that I forgot, and so I had to reply. Okay, so I think you probably have read it, and I want two people to tell me where, for example, how they would turn this one into something useful, something that is in daily life, in their experience, or in their understanding where this could be useful. So, anyone have thought about how this can be useful? Make it fast so that, you know, prompt, even if just whatever. If you are thinking, great. If you are thinking, say thinking. But this is week 10. You must be owning. I mean, I, I was really disappointed by week four. Uh, but is that group four? Or I don't know which one. Group three earlier. I, I am not going to hide my disappointment. I expect at this point people to be basically professional. Um, and owning their task and standing up, not because they are asked, just because they censored it. And if you are not in that level, that really you have to ask why. So, and I want you to also just start being active in everything you do. Otherwise, it's hard, you know, it's very hard to globally to be competent um, because people don't care. It's online and they must you know, they can't understand your anything. Only what you speak, what you react, people understand. So you know, know that uh, an online environment is very different from a local kind of uh, in-person environment, where in-person environment, people can understand the situation. In online environment, they don't understand. Behind the screen, there's a person, either that person claims the work and owns the work and acts um, confidently, or they don't. That's it, as simple as that. So ask yourself, like, why are you not prompt sometimes? So just in this case, I want two people to whatever comes to their mind, how useful this could be in real life. Great. Yeah. That's great. Someone, anyone else can unmute as well and say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Jeremy, just can I ask you, what do you think? Uh, did you say Jeremy? Yeah, so where do you think this could be useful in real life? Where you actually imagine you, you establish a company that offers this service. Why do people pay you? Um, uh, just to build a trust. Uh, among the party. Okay. Uh, Desi, can you explain a little bit? Um, I'm thinking maybe somewhere along the lines of fleet monitoring. We can to a certain people and to use a certain amount and uh, uh, see something. Right. Anyone else? Matilda. Uh, okay great so yeah i mean i think you know um the element of web3 especially if you are thinking in web3 is really you have to know why this is better right there are a number of you know you can do it in web2 right there's like someone can come in and they tag for example samuel let's take Samuel's case right so you know system at the workplace uh, you can put something a tag and then they come and then they tag and then that's it so why would a company if you form a service why would they want to pay you for that um, what is the advantage in that compared to for example just they, they sign um, or they, they make it digital right basically they you you scan them or like they scan their, their card so what is the advantage that they get offered? Let's imagine fleet monitoring. Okay, so in fleet monitoring, what is the advantage that you would have that versus, you know, that your your object or whatever is just comes right, um, you know, when it's delivered. So, but there, there is definitely in the fleet monitoring, one can see, for example, if you are transporting a medical situation or um, if you are transporting something that requires extra care, you know, it has to, it, it can be either cold or, you know, some certain temperature, humidity, or it can be in any form that it has to pass through a certain pass, right? Those kind of things, sometimes, you know, GPSs, whatever, would be useful. But let's imagine that you, it's not like, oh, if you don't pass by that, you would get, uh, you kind of, uh, let, let's imagine, responsibility and trust right so in that element and when responsibility and trust needs to be distributed that's where really and that for example both parties controllers or a, a number of um, units are kind of involved that's where you really need this kind of system where everyone doesn't need to trust any other one for example you know you don't need to trust uh, the, the logistic company or you may not need to trust the people who sent the object, like the company that produced it and sent that object. And the company which is also responsible to ensure it doesn't need to believe, you know, doesn't to, for example, don't need to ask kind of some kind of confirmation to ensure something in case of loss. Now, if all of these parties need to be agreeing and, you know, for something to, to go faster, these are the kind of systems that you want, right? Otherwise now, oh, you know, company says like, no, okay, the humidity was not uh, was not in the agreement that I had, and then, but then the logistic company might say like, no, I have really delivered. It's just the the data error, right? So, um, but we know it's not from our our mistake. Or they may say like, oh no, the the temperature it was actually before it arrived for me. For example, multiple logistic. Let's say one is a ship line, the other one is. Um, an airline and then the other one is a car company that basically transports it so when multiple systems are involved these kind of things and when all of them needs to agree and to see everything in their own way that's one way for example this can help and another one for example is really as simple as universities for example you know just think of a university uh, refunding or a university or you know any any job in that case 
So you go for, um, let's say, a meeting in another city. And then in that city, for example, you have a, a hotel. You say that you, you are staying in a hotel and you are also saying that you have attended and so you are claiming, for example. And in this kind of, this is a very normal for many of these meetings. Sometimes you have to basically say like, this is my receipt, you know, this is the hotel, whatever. But you can really reduce and then also the refund time can be really um, easy. If, for example, you expect like to stay means in a hotel that at least a three GPS point uh, at cer certain times of the night is there, right? Or to attend means at a certain points, you have a coordinate system that tells you within a few meters, you were there, right? And those things can basically unlock every day. You refund and by the end you return, you basically your money is in your bank, like or the, basically the refund. So without any need, for example, even digital uh, receipts, whatever. So this is, for example, one, one reason. So one can really build um, a company out of it or like, let's say, a startup that would offer a number of mm, these claims to be um, to be kind of processed by this. Is it clear or do we, do we need to motivate it further? Has anyone a question or any new ideas now that they get highlighted? Okay. So respond, I think keep respond, uh, respond even if you don't mean Okay, so which party did you? Uh, especially the hotel confirmation parts that you talk about. Yeah, so let's imagine, so you are now um, an employer and that needs to go to the city X. So you live in Addis, you want to go now to a nearby city, Hawassa, and you are attending for a week. And basically what you do is that the company will refund you the hotel. They either paid already, but let's imagine it's not paid. Um, you pay your hotel and you pay also for other extra things as well as also you have a per day, a daily uh, allowance. Now, you normally have to just basically claim it by saying, here is my receipt and you give it to the secretary and the secretary process that and give you. No, most of the time, these things just takes time as well as also trust is basically not established, especially if you are the type of company that really wants to to be able to ensure things done properly that someone didn't just claim right so in this sense what you do is that you define your device can be one uh, state that basically reports these things to a smart contract and the smart contract basically has a uh, fund you know that fund is at the end either goes transferred to you step by step or that fund is basically transferred to the university because you haven't fulfilled the condition that that was put that you agreed on. And what you agreed on is that you stay basically in the hotel, in that hotel. That hotel has a GPS coordinate and a, a range of GPS coordinates. And also just in those days, you are attending something and at least it's specified that in the morning, two times or three times that you are in that building. Um, and also in the afternoon, three times you have to be in that building. And in the evening, three times basically at let's say whatever time like that you are supposed to sleep, that you are there. So at least let's say twice in, in the evening between 9 p.m. Um, to 6 a.m. Uh, that you probably have to be in that building at least twice. So that basically is the device confirms that at least whenever it's sending. And if you fulfill the condition every day, Basically, the hotel amount as well as also your daily allowance is basically uh, transferred. If not, that's withhold. And at the end, basically, you don't. Need, when you return, you don't have to claim. Basically, it's processed based on just the device having its own private key, you know, and that you said, you only just said, okay, here is my account, here is my device account, right? So, and basically, that only requests from that or kind of uh, data that is coming from that uh, device is kind of trusted or to basically process your claim. And does that make does that make sense? Is that clear now? Yeah, of course. So fixed price, whatever, just all of that is basically uh, usually known. That, that one, the price of a night can be requested by the hotel. 
right? So that, that can be another, you know, it's basically a wave two thing where the hotel just basically, you know, the secretary can phone in the beginning and arrange that. So it's not prices and others like extra data can be, of course, um, just known. So that means there's no need to trust you, to trust the receipts, or you have to keep a receipt or something. It basically removes the, the fast claim process. This can be insurance as well. So as we talked earlier, so anything that requires, especially multiple parties. Why multiple parties here? There is a hotel, there is a conference, there is you, and there is the university in this case, or there's your workplace. So all of this basically normally receipt means that it's a trust that the university must trust or your workplace must trust the, the issuer. In this case, it's either the hotel or the food, right? So for example, just to be the restaurant and, and all that. So anyway, this is the kind of way of multiple, when multiple systems involve and trust should kind of needs to be built that, and then if it's slow, for example, that's what you're trying, you're solving the problem. So refund quickly basically makes it and not also processing through a paper will make it much more attractive. So that's why you probably would be your case if you open it as a startup, why people would be um, kind of subscribing to you, right? So basically they get the service quickly and they don't need to, you know, they basically establish a form of company that is a lot more, you know, you don't need to trust. It's all the things pre-written and as long as those conditions are satisfied, that happens. And this could be for a number of other things that requires multiple parties to tr trust each other. Does that make sense? Great, okay. So is everything clear now? Um, I just want people to respond. You have to be active listener. That means like you have to give me a sense that things are either clear or not clear, right? It's not only for me, but I expect you from here on for anything, you just have to be proactively giving, you know, some, some form of indication. Um, and everyone is responsible for that, not, not only a few people. Great, awesome. And then we continue, right? So this is clear. And the whole point in this case, that confirmation by location, we use it as to be the GPS coordinate and the GPS coordinates are coming from your phone. We are, I expect everyone will have a, a smartphone that has at least a GPS coordinate. And you have to build in this case, basically um, a web app, uh, sorry, a D app, a mobile D app that basically reads from a GPS, the sensor of the phone and sends that to a blockchain. And basically the smart contract that's receiving this, this GPS coordinate does some kind of calculation and basically ultimately converts it into either it is, you know, the status is false or, or right, or that means the agreement is um, uh, kept or not, right? So it's basically at every time uh, it would have basically, it could also that that blockchain basically can store offline data that basically is just appending um, some form of data that is basically the timestamp, right? So basically you would be building at this point, just we're not gonna make it complex. We're just gonna assume that at a certain coordinate, it would just receive and it says like whether a condition is satisfied or not, okay? Okay, so you basically will be, um, you will be uh, learning a lot more about tool chains to build and deploy Ethereum based smart contract. You would be basically programming in Solidity using Brownie, Hard Hat, or uh, you know, basically Brownie is basically the a Python version, and Hard Hat and uh, Truffle are basically the JavaScript version. So you would be setting up the three of them, just because a number of these things require sometimes you know uh, when you work in one or another it would be good just to start understanding, but they all are basically uh, development environments. And then you would also start understanding about securities uh, that one has to be careful in, in when writing and also debugging smart contracts, okay? And the same as before, you will learn deeper the concept of blockchain and smart contracts better, right? And this time we have also asked a few more people to come because Musa is not here. So we have asked Azaria and Mahale to help as well in tutoring and grading. 
So that's why the added ones and everything here, it's an individual work. So basically that's the case. Instructions, right? So in the instructions, we try to make this time a number of the references back in the instruction so that it's easier, but really you have to look at the reference because there is really good references here and you probably almost everything that you need for the work um, there is a reference in it here. So the references may not be exhaustive, but a good selection, okay? Um, so you should be looking into them. Uh, instructions, this should be not a normal text. This should be heading one. Okay. Um, so, the fundamental task in this week you are expected to do is, of course, understand the challenge and define a strategy on how to convert the business needs into a smart, smart contract. That really means, you know, basically you will be like before you were kind of doing on Algorand. Algorand had NFT as, as basically a token, so you didn't need to understand smart contracts and, and writing code. This time, Ethereum uh, NFTs or anything are basically smart contracts. That means you really have to write a smart contract. And that means you will be learning programming in Solidity. Solidity is closer to, you know, it's a simple language, it's but closer to basically JavaScript uh, style. And, uh, but you also can write in Brownie, um, which is basically Python. Um, but you will set up Brownie, Hard Hat and Truthful, the three most popular uh, environments to set up and to basically develop a smart contract or work on the app in, in, in Ethereum uh, blockchain. And I have given a number of smart contracts that is kind of that you can use as your baseline. So a number of concepts are similar. You're just basically learning and kind of reusing and remodeling some of them. So you will, for example, in this case, uh, I think it's the uh, refrigerator transportation problem from an Azure um, blockchain project that basically is similar, but that one is for transporting, as I was saying earlier, some form of, um, let's say, a cold object that, or a sensitive object that requires a multi-party. So that means a number of uh, transporting companies takes over. So it's, let's imagine, uh, shipping from China to Addis or from China to, for example, Kigali would require a number of like, the, it, mean, it may need to fly from, let's say the company that's producing to the shipping in China, and then from China to basically, let's imagine that they are using a port in Kenya, it has to be transported by ship. And then from Kenya, probably to uh, Kigali, it may need to go either fly or just by uh, also fly um, uh, car, like some kind of, and that also needs to, to do so a number of things, but given that this is, let's imagine a COVID vaccine uh, that may require that the, actually the temperature and humidity because, you know, eight degree is the kind of between two to eight degree for COVID, for example, is required. So it has to be with, with, between that at all times. If that is broken, probably the vaccine is going to be not working or not, not good. So probably the government of Rwanda may not be able to pay for that, right? So there, these kind of agreements can, then you now have to put a device that basically has a tracker. Um, so, I mean, basically uh, is has IoT in it. It basically records the inside conditions of the package um, or the kind of the container that it's in, its temperature. And then it always keeps basically just like now, it sends that, that uh, temperature and, humidity reading and this basically is kind of confirmed at all time but when for example that's where just this kind of if it is out of compliance that basically the government of Rwanda may say like okay I'm not gonna pay because there was at some time as we agreed there was a time where temperature and uh, whatever was out of compliance right otherwise in the happy case it's basically the yellow line you know that those are the states so that means of course when it's dispatched this thing is created activated again that's the device that's activating starting and then there may be in transit different states that in transit mean for example from shipping you know from plane to shipping from shipping to um, um kind of uh, freight 
uh, travels and all that can happen it's okay just these are kind of roles different shipping they can accept and basically the states change from one to another but they all as long as they are in compliance basically they just keep keep doing and then when it arrives its destination there is a state call completed so in this case you have uh, a three or four states the created states that basically the dispatch and then in the in transit basically every time as long as the compliance is uh, succeeded and only who's reporting uh, at whose hand it is basically change that still kind of makes it as an in transit the compliance uh, uh, while it's in compliance and traveling it's in transit and if there are you know uh, device reading that's wrong even even if after it's get, getting created or while in transit then it gets into this out of compliance state so that's basically it you can get um, you know the code here you can read how it's written so this is the kind of uh, good reference that you use and then what you will have to do is in this case because we are using the mo mobile phone as our device so this would be the basically the you will build a mobile app um, and hopefully you are able to build a mobile app there are a number of just mobile apps like that for just gps reading and basically that one will be installable and that basically you know the mobile app it has two things to do one is to send to us to a blockchain uh, so that means it needs it needs to it, that's why it's a d app you know when you we call it the app or whenever there is whatever it's a mobile app or you know whether it's a web app or anything if it, it has to interact or if it has to send or read from a blockchain that becomes a distributed app like, okay so that's what makes it otherwise it's reading from the sensor um, and there are examples that i have sent also just where you know that you can build a java based or a react based or as long as also just no code um, uh, mobile building um, uh, references there but you'll build for that that basically that the app will have its own account so you basically create for it an account that means that account is just that it has a, a private uh, what it basically means is that an account that it has a, a private key so that means it signs and and basically sends data um, to a blockchain so the mobile app will have uh, an account that is signing and sending data to a blockchain and to a smart contract and the smart contract basically processes that and uh, then you basically i think this one you don't need for the main net because um, we have in the other descriptions we tell you how you use test nets instead of forking but you will see sometimes for development you can fork also the main net and interact with it in your local environment but for now like let's not require that and then you will write debug test and deploy your smart contract I, at least in the basically uh, together with the mobile the app basically uh, in the test nets in the ethereum test net there are multiple test nets but you can choose whatever you want you can keep just um, doing a very simple you know one of them we don't care which test net you use the different test nets again we ask you to understand what it means the different test nets so that you will understand by the end and you will choose whatever uh, suits you and then ultimately you will also just uh, analyze report security and bug analysis of your, your smart contract and what needs to be done to push it into production so that means you basically okay so with that the first task is really a lot more reading a number of reading and learning programming uh, in solidity so for this task we you don't have to set up um, any infrastructure the online remix ethereum ide can actually basically an online editor you can use it um, but you also can just jump in and also do task two to set up your environment first if you prefer to but just but the whole point is that at the first you would read uh, this the inner workings of the ethereum this reference is sufficient all and if you don't understand you can go for more further references videos whatever that you want but this would give you a very comprehensive um these two uh, references can really give you a good overview of what ethereum how ethereum works and, and all that already you already know blockchains and its concepts from um, the previous project so this should just be straightforward but discuss learn and you know be better and then also read about multiple ethereum networks 
So all of these networks, there's only one network that's actually the actual Ethereum network, that's the main net, but the rest, there are many other um, uh, networks that are actually called test nets, but different type of test nets. And they are just because for different, so you will read from this reference, for example, the difference uh, of main multiple Ethereum networks and understand. And again, you will summarize your understanding into your report. So the report writing and the summarization is to help anyone else that's coming after you or you know to uh, basically somebody who's just good at coding to be able to follow and understand so they don't have to go through so you basically create uh, a document or a blog that helps people uh, so that's why you have to just summarize your understanding in your own words and 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 rephrase them like such that it's easier to read for others and then also you should just see the different components of the Solidity programming language. Um, and basically that is, again, this reference can really help you a lot. And there is, at least you should take one course from the Crypto Zombie. It's a very creative uh, kind of way of learning. Uh, so it's basically the Crypto Zombie is that there are a number of um, uh, courses you can take. So let's imagine just you, you have, uh, you can start one course. Basically, it, it tells you how to code in this way, right? So what is the pragma? It's a night leader. Like it gives you the story and it, it allows you to build some things, okay? So if I go back, you know, that's what it does. It tells you what, it, what ultimately you want to do with this course. It's about creating a zombie that does something and you can change some things, but now into the programming using Solidity. So you at least have to take one course and basically attach a screenshot uh, for that. That would be the requested one. So that is a nice one. And then you would uh, read about the Ethereum virtual machine and how it works. And this reference can give you a very good detail as well on that. And then you also would have to read about this smart contract security. Um, it basically is what is the recommended one, but I will also actually link one other that should summarize the different uh, elements. So, you know, vulnerabilities and what is attack in this case, you know, and all that uh, prevention techniques. So this one has a overview, right? So that's why you should read this one and understand once, especially you have understood uh, solidity, you, it, this becomes, this makes sense a lot. So basically you have to read and summarize your understanding again. Okay. Basically, you write your interim report as well as also when you when you write your final report, take a note of this, what is explained here. And this person, who is also probably mostly a Nigerian, if I'm not mistaken, uh, she really did the way that she writes um, uh, very nicely, kind of how her own learning. And I think the details that she was giving, um, you can also learn. Like you, you should start reading hers and then see like whether you, it makes sense for you. But one example, you can see how kind of detail, even if she didn't explain the concepts much, but some things that are missing usually in these big blogs, people explain, sometimes they miss something to explain and you, your blog should be offering that kind of new way of understanding, like for people who are starting. So um, you can look, but explain that this is uh, task one. In task two, you will basically, um, have to set up your smart contract development environment and there is a number of places you can run you know kind of learn how to set up it's very simple but you can i have also shown these references for more complete understanding of um, different environments you can set up and while you are setting up i also just give you one reference that you should be deploying like testing so this is basically a number baiting game that is very clearly demonstrating the different aspects of you know what you do, and so basically um, the number baiting one. While you set up your environment, you should follow and basically complete that, and that is your task to basically uh, doing that. Allow means that you have set up correctly your smart contract. This number setting from this reference. And the only thing that's added from this element is that you should be looking at that code, at that solidity code, and you should be asking, like, you know, kind of evaluating it based on what earlier I showed you, that kind of the security analysis, analyze this code. You know, it's a small code, so basically in your report, you will include your observations uh, of, of setting it up, okay?
Great. Then by that end, by when you finish task one and task two, you are really now, you've understood the concept, you, you know now the business concept, you are now going into building mobile D app and a backend smart contract. So basically you would set up very something similar like, you know, like you saw before, uh, like this, you would just already designed it. You know, it, it doesn't change much. There is probably ours is slightly simpler. There is no in transit. Uh, you, we basically have the device and basically the smart contract in this case, or like the creator. So the creator and the device only, and basically the interaction between them. So it should be simpler, but you know, you can inspire for, you know, for getting that you will build the mobile D app, depending on how experienced you are, you can take, um, you know, the, again, there are a few references that I gave, you could just basically copy. And there is also others, like you have to know that these days you can really build a mobile uh, application very, very easily. Uh, if we can't do that, because you are not familiar, it's also okay just to do it based on, let's say, um, uh, a web app, because somebody from their mobile can basically um, uh, use it also from, so you should be, thinking about how to build just a simple mobile app or D app in this case that reads the GPS coordinates from the GPS sensor and sends it to a blockchain. So all you need is just to, to think about that. It, it is probably for some of you, it's a new challenge. So it's great, you know, it's a new challenge. For some of you, if you have already built, it's okay. Find a shortcut if you haven't built. Um, as I said, there are some differences. And so one part is the device basically that is that reads the GPS and sends to the blockchain. Another one is the creator that basically assigns, uh, basically creates the smart contract, basically who, who develops the backend in that sense, who creates the smart contract and is able to add accounts. That means if a person, uh, different devices who can send to it, right? So that means when it adds the creator, when it adds devices, what it has to do is that it has to define where are they going? So device in this case represents the person who's traveling, right? In the example I gave earlier, the hotel that the person has to be, right? So they basically, because multiple people go to multiple hotels, basically each of the device needs an associated coordinate range uh, that they must agree, right? So it's basically the creator adds that one into the smart contract as well as also creating it, initiating it. So, and then the device basically sends and the result basically happens, you would assume that the money also flows or whatever uh, needs to be paid will go to the device account. So because we assume the device account is the same as the person, just to simplify it only. Otherwise, of course, one could think of a real life action, right? It's like just to another third person uh, money goes because for example, this person has a different bank account and you probably can say that. But in this case, just when things condition, the value of the device, like the, you know, the Ethereum value of the device account is increased. So basically we make it only just two states in this case. So that's it. And in task four, basically all of that you will build, you write some tests, analyze for security again, deploy to one of the Ethereum uh, test nets and deploy also the mobile app. That means that you should be, it should be installable in your mobile at least. Um, and if you can, you also can publish it if the Android or whatever allows you, right? So you can put it somewhere to, to be downloadable if you can. So that is the, the four tasks and the tutorials. There will be a tutorial this afternoon on Ethereum smart contract development environment setup. And then there will be um, a tutorial tomorrow on building a smart contract in solidity programming language, much more of like to you know, to just go through the different components. And then on Wednesday, we will have also some uh, tutorial on React, using React or um, Flutter uh, to build mobile D apps, uh, as well as also connecting it with MetaMask, as well as Infura. So this Infura node, there are different nodes. So you need two things to do. One is a provider. Uh, so that basically means like, you need to connect to a node, right? You need to connect to a node to be able to interact with your smart contract. So that basically is, there are different ones. One is Infura, that's the most popular, but there are also some that I mentioned. I think it's in the reference, there is the um, uh, Moralis um, and, and many, you know, a few others, but basically just, they give you, if you register there, they give you just APIs uh, to connect to. So you can actually use HTTP 
um, APIs to connect with your smart contract in that sense. So that's what's uh, this one. So we will show you like the same as wallet connection, you would use MetaMask, that's your account manager, and then Infura for basically a node provider. And in that case, we also just probably mentioned the different more, you know, no code mobile app frameworks. And as usual, submissions are on Wednesday and uh, Saturday. On Wednesday, all of the kind of the reading and concepts, you should be writing it and submit on Wednesday, uh, as well as also setting, you know, whatever GitHub environment you set up for, you know, uh, testing in this case, for example, the number baiting game, it should be in your GitHub account. You should be using that GitHub account. Of course, you have to create it today and you have to use that one throughout the, the week. Um, and on Saturday, basically, just is the, again, the code, whatever the things that were built and the report. But in the report, you would include the entry in class, whatever you, you were writing, you know, kind of the summarizing and getting understanding from the entry in class. The kind of like challenges that you you passed through and concepts you learned more whatever also uh, while building your uh, refined by location uh, program project okay that's it now from my side then so any question is it clear is it exciting is it scary you know, whatever reaction that you have How do you feel? You did, yeah? Go on, ask. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, I think it feels exciting, but uh, it also looks like there needs to be more works to be done. Uh, my question is just not directly related to the challenge, but can we, I haven't construed the whole document. Sorry, it's the, the, if there is a reference in the document. Uh, can we get uh, some free Ethereum sites that will give us a free Ethers for Ethereum? Yeah, all of testnets. All of testnets are faucets to give you free uh, Ethereum. Okay, they have default. Yeah. You can populate. So for, from MetaMask, you can always populate for the different testnets. Okay. Just, just the same as you, you had from, I think the pure stake or, uh, no, you had some link, right? Where you just basically give it your account and you would, you would get some free uh, algos. It's the same here. MetaMask, if you use just MetaMask, MetaMask, you can source. Yeah, you can get free entry. And a very good question, Doug Maui, right? So why, of course, how smart you become is exactly that. The person can leave their phone in the hotel. Sure. That means if they want to cheat, they cheat, but they cheat, they cheat in a very hard way. You make it harder for them to cheat, right? That means if you're now requesting you know, that in a certain spacing of time that there, there has to be, sure. That means the person will leave the phone and they can go anywhere they want. In any way, that one, you can't save it. Um, even in a normal, like in a human control, you can't be 100%. But you make it harder for people to cheat, right? But actually, and you can also make it in, in some way, you can also actually request in, in the future, like when you are really building this thing as, as your let's imagine as your um, um, as your startup let's imagine what you will do probably is that you you know you make it relatable that means there has to be two people three people like if they are going from your company there you actually require require that it's not only that that there is actually the that there is there has to be a movement right so that means these people must crisscross at some point. So in a way, if a mobile is uh, kind of static, you know, you would basically just know the location would be identical. And so you basically have to encode it in your smart contract that it has to be, at least there has to be a certain variation within that bound, but it has to be, there has to be movement. You know? So in that case, you know, that, that's one way. But Sure, you could really think of a number of ways and your smart contract basically becomes stronger and stronger the more you constrain it, right? The more you say like, okay, I, no satisfaction or design of means that the person is there is that a few readings that actually uh, show that it's slightly different within the range. Otherwise, the mobile is static and we expect. While sleeping means, of course, like if it's at night, 
the mobile could be static, but throughout the day it has to change because the present time will be stable. So you can try to design a logic inside your smart contract. Order. Does that make sense? Great. Any other question? Any other, you know, comment, feedback, whatever you have. You could, right? That's really a good idea as well. Just basically, not only a device, you basically are popping up also for the user to interact. But what if the user misses, right? So that's the kind of, you try to make it a lot more, again, a number of things can be improved. Absolutely, that's one, right? The person has to confirm um, whenever there is a beep, right? So maybe you can, you know, you can generate some sound, they have to switch it off. Or maybe they have to put uh, uh, some kind of, you know, challenge, just like uh, Kapacha, they must solve something, right? So uh, there is a number of things. You, you know, uh, right now you're, you're really in the good direction. That's exactly what logic is. So you make it the logic, the more you know, sophisticated and the more trustworthy it is, it, it makes it a lot more trust kind of. And you know, this is this can be used for delivery. This can be used for a number of things, right? So, but we, for now, just focus on the refund and in such a way that, you know, you re I would imagine this could be really, if one builds it and, you know, finds a way to, deploy it you know, with time, this can be a good service. Um, one can establish that for a number of companies, there's a lot of need for that, especially if, when companies don't really require some sensitive meetings or whatever happen um, in a certain uh, time. And that if, if it doesn't happen, there are others that would, for example, certain training, if you don't go, for example, or if you really are not there, and if um, it, for example, it may, insurances may not cover, right? So that means insurances also needs to know that the, the team has been trained by that and the team has been there. Things like that, you know, you can build some sophisticated things that makes it attractive to sell this, you know, basically to companies. So there, there's absolutely. Great, anything else? The sky is, of course, the limit. It's learning new, so so many things new. Probably Ethereum blockchain itself new for you. Learning a new language is new. Um, building a mobile app, a mobile app, is new, and not only a mobile app. Now you are building a mobile app. Uh, that means you have to connect. So the concepts from Algorand is going to be the same. It will help you because a number of things are similar, right? Just uh, there has to be some kind of wallet connection and all that is the same, but just slightly. So it should be exciting. And basically um, with this, some of you especially who are choosing to be Web3, really, really put whatever effort you can here to understand and to ask, be really proactive. That's the only way you can learn more. Awesome. So I assume because of questions are not coming, everyone is clear and excited to start working on that. And good luck. Cheers, guys, and 10 Academy team, we can't stop the recording. Bye, guys, have a good day and um, happy Web3 building.